guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here from Nigel's Modeling Bench, and we have now got part three of this Russian 9K37M1 Book Air Defense Missile System from Meng in 135th scale, and it's part of their Turek Stegosaurus series SS014. So, what have we done so far? Um, in parts one and two, we looked at our building strategy and what we were going to do, and if you remember, I started off went straight in at steps 39 and 40. Uh, was it 39 and 40 or 29 and 30? 29 and 30, sorry. Um, in with the, um, the firing mechanism. And those parts are still here in their little tray with the Mr. Surfacer now all sanded. So we're ready to do some more work on them. Uh, we've also got all the tracks together and here they are. All beautiful as they are and um, very, very flexible as you'll, you'd have seen if you've been watching this. Um, we've put our torsion beams together and I've just gone on now and I've glued these two parts here. These are the two halves for the um, eye for the uh, for the cable that goes around the front. And the reason I've glued them together is they need some Mr. Surfacer in there. We've got a bit of a fit issue, uh, a bit of a big gap there. So I'm going to get some Mr. Surfacer and let it go off. We don't need to put these in right away, so it's not going to hold anything up. Uh, and then later on in the build, you'll have to do another one. So there's A33 and A36. There's two of the A sprues. So Basically what it's telling us to do there is hook it over that hook and then glue it on and what we'll do is we'll leave it loose and then when it comes to fitting the um, the cable over the front then uh, then we'll basically attach them to that so it's it's quite nice the way it works out and it's got this plastic cable as well rather than copper so we'll see how that works out. Um, if you remember in the last last one as well, we did the wheels and we had all those um, rubber mouldings on them. Well, I've been out today and stuck them in the lathe, I basically machined them off nice and smooth. Left the tread on the sides. You can see the, um, the moulding marks there because that's exactly how they would be. But as they get worn, this is how they would look. And I don't like to see any of the moulding ribs on there. I like my tank tyres to be... Um, you know to look quite worn and perhaps we'll take a few little bits and pieces and chunks out the corners just to just to kind of add to them as a bit we also did the idlers if you remember they were as we look at them like that they were kind of on an angle like that so i had to take quite a lot off of them actually to get them to square up and then that way once they're on the tracks they will look so much better because they'll sit flat on the track instead of having this great cone on them um, as a result, the outer wall is slightly thinner, which is nice. And one little misstep, miss it slipped in the jig on this one. So I've got a little, um, you can see a little polished line around there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, once it's painted and it's got some dirt around it, it's, um, it's not going to show. So what we need to do next is get these. Um, oh, and also I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed. Great. We're over five and a half thousand now, which is amazing. Um, Thank you to everyone who's donated money to me on PayPal and Patreon, all going towards new uh, camera and lighting equipment, which I'm going to be getting very, very soon. Um, and also, I don't know if you've been watching along, but here's the short wheelbase Land Rover conversion from the Hobby Boss 110 kit, um, converted it into a 90. So if you haven't been watching that, go and have a look. There's three parts of that up and it's, um, it's getting a lot of interest and a lot of people seem to like it. And I'd like to inspire someone to have a go. So... Um, these torsion bars. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> as an assembly, they are made up, all the torsion bars are the same, but we've got four different types of ends, and they're A, B, C, and D. So what I've done is, because I want to put it all back in the box and get on with the Land Rover, um, I've colour-coded them. So A's have got one red flash, which you can see there. B's have got two red flashes, C's have got one black flash and the D's have got two black flashes. So A, B, C, D, that's how they are there. So we can go on now and get these in. So I'm going to put the instructions down there, pick up the hull um, and we're going to look. If you remember as well, I did this modification on here. Go back and have a look at stage two before you carry on with your build. That, um, that idler there, the, the pivot for the idler is very loose in that hole. So... Uh, don't glue it in yet, get your wheels on everything, get your tracks made up and then you can set your track tension and glue the idler in place then. Um, but also that gives the, if I grab an idler, this one here, if you look it makes it uh, fit in there very nicely, in fact it probably won't even need to be glued. So that's a really good um, 
good thing to do I've, I've put some five thou plastic card in there to bring the um to bring the diameter down by ten thou it's about 0.25 it's, it's really really sloppy in there so um oh i forgot to say i've also done the return rollers as well machine them to get rid of the tire tread on them so what we're going to do now is put these in so we've got the the hull is basically like this so forward is that way i've got an arrow there forward is this is the back end so they're all going to face backwards so the first one on this side is a b and the b we know has got the two red flashes so i'm going to put this one in there like so and that's just going to sit in there and that's how that's going to work now they aren't a very good fit in there so getting the same tension on all the tracks is going to be quite difficult i'm actually thinking maybe i should pack something in there because i i don't want you know one to be harder than the others and it's going to not sit level so let me just have a look at what i can do about this and then i'll come back okay so i found some plastic car again five thousand seems to be about the right size um and just put it in i'm just going to put it in there and it will just help to um to get a better fit on that square section into that square hole um at the moment the way they go in there it's not very good at all so this one's going to be an a going in here so i'll put that one in and then I'll literally just slide that in like so with the plastic card in behind it make sure it's fully home grab some extra thin and put some in there make sure it goes down both sides of the card give it a push down and there we go okay so it does give a far better fit what i don't want as i was trying to say earlier if they're all like this and one happens to be down more than the other the whole model might sort of sit like if this one was further down than these let's say that it might make the model sit back up i i doubt that it would because it's going to be quite weighty but you know better safe than sorry and it, you know the time it takes to cut up, cut up a bit of pla cut, cut up a couple of pieces of plastic card it doesn't matter so it's telling us here the opposite one is c so i know this one here is a c so i'm going to grab a piece of my plastic card put that in there like so torsion bar c and then slide that in there like so and then put some extra thinning as I've said all along with this kit um, I mean you can see the play there I've got even with the plastic card in there so I think I'll put another piece in there it's not a bad kit by any stretch of the imagination it's not a bad kit at all but it's just not up to Meng's usual standard and I'm wondering if their quality is starting to go down a bit because when you look at their smirch for example <clears throat> that kit is lovely it goes together like a dream um, there we go I've got that in there so yeah that kit goes together like a dream um when you look at their 9 9 11 as i mentioned before as, as you've seen me build on here on this channel the is absolutely plastered and ejector pin marks everywhere and um yeah it's just not the quality so we've got another c going in here Again, you can see you can see how sloppy that is in there it's um very sloppy i'm gonna have to cut some thicker plastic card i think there we are they're all in now and um i did it off camera because getting the, those bits of shim in was quite fiddly i ended up using 10 thou shim up here and uh, now they um they all fit very nicely in there they're very tight having said that they don't all sit exactly the same anyway um so but you know it's uh 
it's better to have them like that than have them all over the place and the trouble is the fit in there was um, was quite loose very loose indeed actually in some cases so what we can do now is start to look at actually fitting our tracks and getting this idler in the right position so I could start off by cutting that log off but I won't um, and what I'm going to do is put this idler pivot in okay and we can see we've got some movement in there but it's not a it's not a hell of a lot but it may be enough so if I put it on the slackest setting first so this won't stand upon its own perhaps what I'll do is put a couple of wheels on here then it might stand up then there we go okay so we can pit, fit all our um, all our road wheels like so and you may notice there's some black paint on these road wheels the only reason that is is what I did I sprayed them with some XF1 Tamiya uh, before I fitted the before I put them on the lathe and that way I could see when they whizzed around on the lathe when they'd actually cleaned up that was why I did that so there we go so that sprocket's on there now and everything should turn nice and freely and it does okay so I can take a track uh, make sure it goes the right way round so okay this is going to be having the pin going on from the inside so what I'll do is I will take that sprocket off I think and I will put the I'll take the idler off too there we go right so what I'll do is I'll put the track in there like that and then I can feed the idler over the track horns push it down and then on this end I can feed the sprocket into the track and put the track being careful not to break anything put the sprocket on get the track up over those there but I haven't put them in have I I think these are quite a loose fit actually yeah they are they're very loose so whether you need them there or not I don't know Again, again you see it's like I don't know why this kit is like it it's got very loose fitting parts um, in, in a few places and it's uh, you know for a kit as expensive as this there we go Now this one come round here. Well then I think what I'll do is put it upside down and I will put the idler at the slackest position. track into there like so it's easier said than done well the pin is actually on the outside not the inside so it's got to go in just as I showed you before you we need to push it in from the side don't try and clip it in from the top wow this is not easy I 
here we go and then I've got a cocktail stick which I've sharpened the end on I can shove that in there Wow, this is so fiddly, it's untrue. Purely because I don't want to break these tracks. There we go, that's gone in now. So that's all held together like that. And as we can see, the tension on there is pretty much perfect. Now if I pull that idler out a touch, Yeah, those track links want to go more over that sprocket. So there we go. So it looks like what Meng have done is actually given us a, a, a good, a good starting point. Um, and 113 lengths is correct. 113 links, sorry, is correct. And that idler, as you can see, is sat in there. Um, I'm not even going to glue it. I don't think, see any point in gluing it. And then you can always, once it's built and painted, you know, when you've got some paint on there, things might tighten up a little bit. But we can see here how the wheels are touching the tracks in certain places and not others. But once we put it down, it does sort of settle down. I'm just looking, once it's got some weight on it, does the, do the tracks. You can see the track, you probably can't see. Um, if I use this. As I put the weight on it, you can see the track underneath that sprocket goes slack. So I, I guess that's realistic, I'm not sure. But it's not going to have that much compression on it anyway. So I think I will leave that idler loose. And then when, once we've got the weight of the model and everything on there, if the track is all saggy, we can cut that little peg off and just pull it out a bit more. So again, that's another good reason for us for not, um, <clears throat> not gluing that that in and also having that piece of shim in there to make it a nice tight fit so I'm going to assume that the other side is going to be the same and just carry on um, so now we can take it all apart again and I would put the tracks together permanently but I want them laid out for painting so we can now take the track off I'm going to take the track off with the sprocket and I broke it there we go had to happen, didn't it? Unfortunately, then the sprocket just pulled away, and it has actually just popped out. So we may be able to just pop it back in. I push this pin out like so then I should be able to put this down on the bench pop that side in and then just push that pin back in and there we go good as new so uh, yeah be careful taking the tracks off unfortunately what happened there was the it pushes on the poly cap and getting it off is Kind of, it suddenly came and it just broke the track so obviously don't play with it too much so we get these wheels off ready for painting those idlers you can see how loose they are in there I mean this is this is what I'm talking about the fit it's just look at it it's abysmal so we'll leave that idler in there I love pulley uh, either swinging arm in fact no I'll pull it out and then uh, maybe when we're finished and everything we can glue it then but I'm not going to glue it at the moment that's for sure so there we go so we need to move on to something else now here we are with a spread of parts here back on our um, launcher rack assembly again um, so we've got some small detail parts to add now that we've got all our Mr. Surfacers sanded and everything we can start adding the detail part. So we've got these uh, 
small little parts here that go on the bottom of this outside part. If you remember, I marked these with a pencil. We've got a D there. And this one is going to go... That's the wrong one. It's that one I need. That one is going to go that way round. And it looks like it goes with that. Yeah, I've got the wrong one. That's the that's that's also the same part. That is a that is a 64. So this here should be a 63. Yeah. So there we go. Um, that way round, and I'm going to put that in there, and then that little square lug goes on the square lug at the back. So we can just put a drop of extra thin in there. Just give that a tap and then a drop of extra thin in that one and in there there we go so that's that one on and then we've got this one here which is a 64 and this is E as you can see it's marked up and it's that way round so now this one's going to go that front pin is going to go in there and then the back's going to go into there, so dab of extra thin on there, give it a tap. So that's that on there. And then repeat again on this side. I don't think I put any glue on there, did I? It uh, doesn't seem to want to go down. And then finally, this one here. Gonna go into there. Like so. There we are, so that's that's all done. I'm just going to put a line of glue down there because I notice they go up against that lug there. There we go, so they're all in now. Then moving down to here, we've got these parts here, so I've marked this one, this is an F, and this one here is K, as you can see I marked them. Um, and we've got these parts here. These are part of the uh, slider that the rocket's going to sit, or missiles are going to sit in. And we've got these parts here. I've noticed they had holes in the back. I was looking at the references. So I've just drilled four holes in the back just to add a bit more interest. When the plastic part actually comes um, in the kit, it's just plain. There's no, there's no holes there or anything. And that is just literally going to sit on there. I've just noticed there's an ejector pin mark in there which needs to go. So I'm going to give that a scrape with a flat knife and then we can get in there with a skinny stick and remove that. Not sure if it's going to be visible but I think it might well be. This one's a bit shallower, so we can just sand this one. So start again. So that one's going to go onto there, onto there and down like that. And I'm just going to run some extra thin on the inside over where that uh, So that's 
basically going to sit there like that so that's fine and then the other side is going to go on like so Put some more on there that didn't stick. What I'll do is I'll just run some down there as well, which will help keep it all together. And I'm going to run some over the inside there. Just remove the sandy marks from where I took that ejector pin mark out. And there we go, that's that one done. So I'll do the same on that side off camera in a minute. And if you remember then we've got these bits here which we glued together. We put some Mr. Surfacer in the seams. We thinned out that section in the back and we painted the inside. So now these need to go on. So that's going to go on like so. There's a little sort of chevron thing in the back of there which is going to fit into there. So I painted these on the inside because I thought maybe they'd be seen, but it actually looks like they won't be. So what I'm going to do here is glue one side and let that go off before I do this side because we're going to sandwich these two parts in here and I'm going to leave those to pivot so I can make sure I get them positioned correctly when I come to actually put the, um, the missiles in there. So that one's on there now. Have I put that on the wrong side? No, I haven't. So this one's going to go on the same. Just like that. Drop a glue just to hold it. Be very careful with these smaller parts when you're holding them. The glue doesn't capillary under your fingers. And then we'll put some glue around the sides. Just to get it locked in drop over the top and there we go and I want to make sure that's square so I guess the best thing to do there is once again use these good old calipers I'm not using for measure I'm just going to check for square so if I lay the if I lay the cal lay that section there lay these two legs into the caliper and then come across like so that I'll make sure they're parallel I can do the same on the other one. Leave that in there like so. There we go. That's gone into that. So we'll let that go dry. And I'm going to do these and then I'll come back. Right. So they're glued on now and they're dry. So we're ready to put these parts in. And these are A51 and A50. These form the outer sections of the uh, the launching rails. So um, I don't want to glue them in because they're going to have a little bit of play in. And they kind of key into, um, there's a circular hole in there. But in these, there's a kind of elongated uh, oblong hole, if you like. And then there's an oblong peg on there that goes in. The one thing I noticed from my references is, well, again, these are drilled. And they've got um, a series of holes up the inside. If you can see there, I've actually drilled some holes. They're only about 0.5, but it just it just gives something, you know, a little bit more detail to that area. And also, if you look, they've got these holes molded in on the face here, but they're not molded through. They've, they've got them on both sides, but they're actually hollow. This here, this triangular piece here is actually a hollow steel section. So what I've done is I've done one here for you to see the, the improvement you can make by actually drilling it through. So what I've done, start off, I've got a 0.4 drill here, and then I'm going to go into, so that's the one I've already drilled, I'm going to go into these semicircular cutouts. There's the, the ones at the bottom, I'm not going to go right through, I'm just going to go in an angle and deepen them. And the semicircular cutouts are moulded fairly deep, so when you actually drill them through, I think you will get the effect. Once it's painted and weathered, 
think you will get the effect that it's a, sim, a, a semi-circular cutout right through. Um, even though it's obviously a, a round hole. So I'm just going to put the drill through there. Like so. Do the same again on these bottom two. And then the same here. And then go through. He's probably best drilling from the outside. I did the other side of this one from the inside. Probably best drilling from the outside in case there is a bit of misalignment with the moulding or your drill's not perfectly square. Then it'll look good from the outside. At least. There we go. So that's those done. And then for the two bigger holes, I've got a point. I think I've got a point seven. Yeah, a point seven drill here and I'm just literally going to go through like so and open that hole out as well and it gives you um, a sort of better scale representation of what's actually there and again, it's, it's quite a, um, an obvious part of the vehicle, even if the missile's down, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's on the side. So um, I'm going to do the rest of these. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, obviously, um, because I think it is going to weaken them slightly, not very much. But um, it's just something that may, may have gone to the trouble of, of moulding it in there. So... I just want to go to the trouble of sort of finishing it off. I would imagine, especially the likes of Voyager with their aftermarket uh, etch sets will probably replace these pieces with folded brass to give you a, a real accurate look. But I can imagine they'd be quite fiddly to fit. So that's that one down there, all done now on the point seven. So that drill can go away. And I'll go on and drill the rest. Right, they're all drilled now, and um, as you can see, they look a lot better like that. And I've, I've, what's drilled, I've gone over them with a very dry brush of Tamiya Extra Thin, just to sort of clean the edges up and take away any um, little tiny filings of burrs or anything that's there. So that's all done. Right, so now we've got the fiddly part of getting this together live on camera for you to see. So this is 50. So... This has got the there we go. One side has got the um, elongated peg, and one side has got the hole. So I'm assuming That's going to go in there like so. Yes, right. So that's going to go in there like that. So I've got to hold that there. And then that one's going to go in there like that. So I've got to hold that one there. And what I don't want to do is get any glue on these. Because as I've said, I, I want to position them once they have the missiles in place. I want to make sure that I get the... There we go. Let's grab those. I want to make sure I get them correct. Oops, here we go. It's all falling apart on me now. Probably the best thing to do would be to glue this in. With a decent drop of extra thin without pulling it apart again. Like so, and then put these in. 
afterwards. So one is keyed. So this one has got um, a, an oblong. That one. That one has got an oblong peg on the end of it so that it goes in, so it can only go in one way. Just pulled it out again. Oh dear, dear, dear. This is this is fun. Let's get some more extra thin in there. It's probably because I didn't clean that paint off. For no other reason than I couldn't be bothered. So I can pick that up, push that into there. So that one is in there. And then I can pick this, put this one into there, pick that up, push that into there. And there we go, it's together. Right, so. Gonna not flood it, but get plenty of extra thin in there because I want that to glue down and not fall apart on me. Because this whole lot is going to hang off of that plate on the end. It's going to go on the end of there and f and hang off the end of this plate. So what I could do with is a thin clamp, something that will get in there. Not sure if my pegs. Yes, they do. There we go. So I can leave that to go off and we're away. So I'll do the other one off camera because I don't want to embarrass myself again. I'll see you in a sec. OK, so they're both together now and we can see that the uh, the parts there are free to move so I can set them in the correct place after I've finished and I've got the clamps in there holding it all together just like that. So that's that together like that. I've also gone on and glued these on H and J and D and E. These are the side parts of the launch system. Um, it tells you to put this vinyl piece in first but I can't see any reason why you can't feed those pipes down through. Uh, afterwards so I'm just leaving them off for now and then if I need to do any more little fettling or Mr. Surface of work I can. So um, that's those and we'll leave those now to go off. So basically now um, looking looking around this area that's done. I'm not going to glue these on yet because I want to do some work around those seams on there. Um, looking, if, looking ahead something else I want to get sorted this beam here, C45, C47, C83, C28. So we need to get our C screw out of the box, which I believe is this one. Yes, it is. So get that one out of the bag. So we've got C28, which is the piston, the hydraulic ram for the uh, to lift the, the firing mechanism. And then we've got these two here. And then we've got that C83, which is there. Okay, so we've got those parts off. Very big sprue attachment points or sprue gates, sprue nibs, whatever you want to call them. That's gone like that. I'm going to take my Matador 400 grit and just remove that nib from there. Turn it over and just quickly rub over the seam on the other side and then I can take my skinny stick and just get rid of that sprue nib and the seam and everything on there so that's that done. I'm not going to worry too much about these nibs on here because they're going to get sorted after we're glued together. What I am going to do is just quickly run over and make sure these faces here are nice and flat and square and everything. Unfortunately the corner of those peg holes are getting in the way. Here we go. 
pretty really, really good way to get a perfect seam straight away and then this here has got some flash on it so we'll get that off like a so I'm just going to get a stick and run it inside there just to make sure there's nothing of it left we've also got some flash on the inside as well there we go right so now it says on here in this structure it's telling us to bend it apart so that we can fit this in there and I can see I've still got some flash in there around that hole Let's just turn that sideways and then that clips in to that hole there it's actually a nice snug fit it's not all floppy and everything which is cool and then this is going to go that's symmetrical so I want to get rid of the there's some flash around that ejector pin mark god this kit is just covered in ejector pin marks with flash on them I mean I know we're modelers and I know it's you know it's um It's just par for the course, it's part of what you do, but blimey. I mean, this, this kit retails at like 60 quid in this country. And, uh, I don't know. I think the, the pan is like half that price, isn't it? But I don't know. Some, some I did a message telling me the panda was a dog. But uh, I'm not sure. So which way does this go? That's going to go like that. And those pins don't even go in those holes anyway. So let's just cut them off. Here we go. That fits together a lot better without those pins. So. What I think I'll do is sand it a bit more, cut these things off because they're getting in the way of the sanding. That's better. Can hold that now and just put some extra thin in there to give it something to just hold it so I can turn it around and do the other side. There we go, guys. And then what I think I'll do, I'll just run the, just run the brush down the outside just to make sure. There we go. And then I think I'll get a couple of pegs and just see if I can't yeah they're a bit too strong I need something weaker hmm maybe they're not too strong after all There we go and we can just check if we want to we can check that's going to fit in there I'm assuming this only goes one way yep 
yeah that's quite a nice fit actually so that's all good so we'll leave that now to go off and just to make sure that pivot doesn't ever push back and come out I'm just going to put on off I think I've got some glue on the pin I'm not sure if that glue went up in that pen or not, but uh, we'll soon see. I could always draw that out and put a metal rod in there anyway. Might be a better job to do it that way. I don't think there's glue there because it would be starting to get sticky by now. And a little tip for you guys, I know you like your tips. The um, extra thin quick setting, the lighter green, this one, if you ever do have to do stuff like that, I'm not sure to use that there because what you can do with that, if you do get glue where it's not supposed to be, just keep moving the part of that. You'll feel it start to go stiff and all of a sudden, boop, it just goes free. And because it dries so fast, yeah, I, I don't think I've got glue on there. That would be going uh, tight by now. As I say, at the end of the day, I'll have to uh, put a metal rod in there if I... Um, if I've messed it up so there we go guys I'm gonna call that a day for part three because I'm now in a position where I have to stop and let stuff dry and if I don't get a video out I know that you guys will be starting to get impatient and you like to see a video regularly and I know a few of you have actually bought this kit on my uh, review and my build so you're probably um, building this with me okay I'm not going to put a peg on any clamps on anymore because when you squeeze that it tends to open up so there we go I'm happy with that happy that's come out and uh, I'll be ready now for some cleanup on the seams and we're away so thanks for watching guys I'll say once again thank you to you uh, to all you've um, subscribed thanks for all your comments and everything it's great to hear from you all and um, also I want to say a big thank you to those that uh, have pledged money on um, patreon and, and PayPal and um, yeah Thanks just generally for the support you give me, guys. It's great. And um, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.